Welcome to those of you watching on YouTube right now and potentially on Facebook um, on my 818 Biz Chats group. Um, if you guys are not part of that group and would like to join for free, um, you can go to facebook.com slash group slash 818 Biz, B-I-Z. So 818 B-I-Z. And um, I am excited because we are talking today about goal setting. So um, just want to say welcome back to Life on Point Radio. This week's episode, uh, we are talking about uh, money <laughs> and um, like always, but we're also talking about goals and how to reach these goals in a substantial way and in a way that's going to make sense to your brain and how it's going to help translate to you. So um, don't forget to subscribe uh, to subscribe on whatever platform you're on and if you're watching on YouTube or Facebook. Um, and if you're listening, don't forget to rate and review this podcast wherever you are. If you're on Spotify, if you're on Anchor, if you're on uh, Apple Podcasts, that helps out the podcast quite a bit. Um, if you could do that and I appreciate it so much. And, um, if you've never tuned in before, hi, I'm Ellie and this is Life on Point Radio. I'm a business owner and a business consultant and I teach people how to identify the power they hold to, um, to create wealth with it. So, um, if you'd like to know a little bit more about me and how I got into entrepreneurship, um, go listen to, uh, the, um, episode one of season three, which is my journey to entrepreneurship. Um, I'll also leave it linked in the uh, notes down below. Um, last week, we talked about how money doesn't uh, buy everything, how money cannot buy everything, and that it's important to not make money a god, and how in very, um, and oftentimes, we are actually making money a god because, God, um, you know, money controls our life so much. And so um, we talked about that last Last week and this week we're talking about goals and um you know you know small goals get you to the big picture and um today we're talking about how they do get you to your end goal so um you know I I love the you know my business mentorship program that we have is just incredible because um we get so many um, audios and tapes and visuals and um, just everything. Everything we could ever need or ask for or imagine is provided for us in my business and it is just such a privilege to be a part of it and um you know they talk a lot about goal setting and um the founder of our company is uh, is just you know a, a prodigy when it comes to these types of things and um he recently talked about uh, goal setting and um, he talks about it, you know, multiple times uh, over the years, but I was listening to him talk about it and I realized, you know, small goals, you know, we say like we have big goals and we're trying to reach these big goals and all these things, but if you don't have the steps and the map to get there and not necessarily even a plan, but it's just a roadmap to get to your end goal, um, you're never going to get there because your brain brain is always going to find a way to say you can't or you suck or you this or you that. It's always negative. And unfortunately, the human brain and the mind and the will and the emotions, our default is negativity. And so when you're trying to accomplish something that is quite a big goal, you're going to face a lot of negativity. And so, and I don't just mean from yourself, because if you're self-critical and if you're hard on yourself and if you tend to have a hard time um, stepping outside of your comfort zone, then you're not going to be able to reach those goals. And then you tell someone about the goals that you're reaching, you might get a negative Nancy, you might get a negative family member, you might get a negative friend that tells you you can't do it. I've had all three. And, you know, it's, it's just the name of the game. And, you know, so when you like, let's say you've, you're planning a family vacation, you know, and you're, um, you're trying to save up for it. You're going to build yourself a roadmap for each month. I'm going to set aside three, you know, maybe $200 or a hundred dollars. You know, I'm going to set aside a hundred bucks a month for the next year. And hopefully after that year, I'll be able to go vacation where I want a vacation for how long I want a vacation for. So, um, and then if you get big chunks of money here and there, you can split it, put it in the savings and then put it in that other, you know, building out funds so that I can go accomplish my goal. And 
you know, that is setting up small goals, you know, a hundred bucks a month is that small goal to put that into the savings. That's your roadmap to get there. And for instance, if you're, you know, let's say you're sitting down to look at a business or a financial plan or, or, you know, if you're building a business, you know, I build a business and, you know, to build out a business it's a lot of work and it's a lot of effort. It's a lot of mental energy and it is just so, it's a lot of work and you can get very easily discouraged when you don't see the results that you want to see quickly. And so, um, you know, you can, you can get really discouraged. You can get really negative. And if you're not disciplining your mind every day by, um, doing things like, um, you know, declaring over yourself that you are positive and that you are, um, you know, you're better than where, than who you are yesterday and, you know, all these types of things, then, you know, you have a better chance of actually reaching your goals because eventually that negative voice and that no, and those negative, um, tendencies are actually going to stop. And so, creating small goals is really, it's, it starts as a habit. It starts as creating a habit. And so when you're doing like building a business, for instance, when I built, um, Ellie Rose services, I had to, you know, do a whole outline of my business. And this is why I love flow charts. You know, my, my older brother, Eric, he actually, we were just uh, working on a flow chart recently for a project we're doing together. And I had forgotten about these flow charts and I was like, oh my God, that's what's been missing because I, because I'm not seeing, I'm only seeing the big picture and I'm not breaking it down into little steps. That's why I'm getting so stressed out because I'm trying to push to reach this big goal without having small steps and small stepping stones to get there. And so that's a problem, you know? And so, you know, let's say you're, you're sitting down, you're planning your business and, you know, or you're looking at a business plan and the end goal or, you know, the fact that you're undertaking this incredible task to build out a business is so much for your brain to handle because your brain is going to see big money, big number. How do I get to that big number? You know, but, and, and, you know, it doesn't think right away, how do I get to that big number? Not all the time. Uh, you know, there, you might be the individual that's like, oh, I always think of that. If you are, kudos to you. <laughs> but, you know, most of the time, our brains don't, are, are not able to handle, you know, seeing a big number, you know, and then we jump in and then we realize that I don't have a plan. I don't have steps. I don't know anything about what I just signed up for, essentially. And when that happens, you know, it's it's this thing about... Um, you know, when that happens, your brain gets overwhelmed and then people quit because they're so overwhelmed and so stressed because they don't know that if they set small goals, like talk to one person a week, make a new friend once a week, go to the grocery store and talk to one stranger once a week, you know, when you're out doing your groceries, these become just natural habits. And when you do small goals, they become natural habits. So small goals such as, you know, listening to a business audiobook. I'm going to listen to one business audiobook a month. Oh my gosh, I can't talk today. I'm going to, you know, listen to an audiobook or read a book that's about business once a month. And you break that down. What does that look like? How many hours is it going to take me to get through this, this book, you know? And, or, you know, looking up, you know, what are successful people doing right now? What's going on with the economy? Doing small things like that to educate yourself actually helps you know how to get that right angle with people and what's going on because they're affected by everything that's going on in the economy, even if they don't know. Um, if, even if they don't know everything that's going on in the economy. So I do want to quickly mention um, my friends, uh, my wonderful friends, David and Stacey Whited. They are um, they are business partners of ours as well, but they have started this podcast called Flyover Conservative. They view current events through conservative Christian values, which I so appreciate because there's so much negativity going on right now and they actually are able to find positives in some of the things that are happening and they bring on all these people to talk about what's going on in the world. Um, they do reaction videos and it's just so great. And they actually did one recently. Um, I'm going to find it right now. But they did one recently on the economy and um, they were talking about, you know, how do we survive uh, the economic doom or boom? And so I will leave that in the link um, as a link in the notes down below. Um, it's called How to Survive a 
economic doom or boom um, flyover conservatives. And they actually interview someone who actually works in the gold and silver industry. And they talk about investments and stock and what's going on. I mean, they have, they do their research, which I so appreciate because they, they have all the things that um, we would never know to look for in some ways. And, um, you know, you might know to look for it because you might be a smart person, but for someone, for someone like me, who's incredibly busy and doesn't have time to look at the news and try and figure out what's true, what's not, and all these things you know it's enough for me to be able to go to this podcast with people that I trust that I know are doing all this research they're vetting all of their sources and all these things and it's just incredible so I would highly suggest you go listen to that um, if you're you know trying to get a little more educated in the economy but all that being said you know your brain is only able to handle so much so if your brain sees you know let's say you're sitting down someone showing you a business plan you could make up to one billion dollars uh you know a, a year or whatever the case may be um or smaller numbers like you can make an extra five hundred dollars a month you know five hundred dollars for most people is just a drop in the bucket you know <laughs> and you know not a drop in the bucket in that sense but when you're when you're pouring five hundred dollars into your bank account it feels like a drop in the bucket but when you have to spend it it's like an arm and a leg and so it's funny how that works and you know it's sometimes you know well how do I make ten thousand dollars a month how do I make you know twenty four thousand dollars a month how do I do this you know and our brains just see these big numbers we get excited because our emotions are so attached to this money and to this thing of you know because we need money to live like I said in last week's podcast you know we need we need what we need and we can't do anything about that. And the reality is, is that money is something that we need. Money is something that we will always need. And it's the form of currency. It's a, um, you know, it's something to, you know, get us to be able to, um, you know, put food on our table and take care of our families, our kids, our, our spouses, you know, ourselves, you know, as individuals, you know, doing that alone is hard enough. (laughs) And so, um, you know, it's, it's, you know, me and my boyfriend, we're actually talking about this yesterday on our way because um, my boyfriend's mother is a CPA. And so um, me and her were talking a little bit about, you know, finances and what's going on in the economy and things like that. And, you know, me and my boyfriend were talking, we were talking about how, you know, $60,000, you know, quite, you know, and, you know, 10 years ago was, you know, usually more than enough to feed, you know, and take care of, you know, for, you know, for a family of four. But the reality is, is that nowadays that's nothing. It's barely enough to cover, you know, a family of two, you know, and, you know, it's, you know, a couple and, you know, comfortably and because the costs of living have just gone so high up. And so, you know, it's, it's all based on inflation and, So all that being said, when you're sitting down to look at a goal, you have to break it down into small steps. So, you know, if you're getting into a business, you want to make sure that you're breaking down the big picture, this big number, this 20, let's say $24,000 is our big number. We need to break that down into small tasks. How, what do I need to do every day, every week and every month to actually reach this goal by, let's say, two years from now, let's, let's put it two years, three years, you know, maybe, um, you know, maybe potentially that's not the case, but, um, you know, it's just, it's one of those things where, you know, every big picture has small steps or tasks to get there. And breaking these things down actually helps your brain process at a speed it can digest everything and, you know, everything that you're putting on your plate. So um, I have a massive binder of, you know, of everything that I need to do, um, you know, everything I have access to and all these things because I, uh, my brain doesn't have the time to figure out where all this stuff is. So I put my notes in there. I put, you know, my checklist in there. I have, you know, where I can find things books, audios, all these things, my, um, my declarations, you know, my self affirmations, I call them declarations that, you know, some people call them self affirmations, whatever you call it. Um, my goal statements, my goals, um, my end goal, you know, for the next five years, you know, that type of a thing. And so, you know, like I was saying earlier with a flow chart, it makes it so much easier. You know, um, Eric, uh, Eric is my older, uh, sort of adopted brother and he is just, amazing. He and his wife, Jess, have two of my dearest little, little 
oh my god they're so adorable they have their two daughters who just I adore with all my heart and um Eric actually just started his podcast called brand my heart he is a um he works in marketing and graphic design and he is extremely good at it and he's also a musician a worship leader and all these things and um he's also a businessman and so um so go check him out. I'll link his podcast in the notes below as well. But um, I actually met up with him on a project that we're both working on for our dad, uh, for my dad. And I knew the big picture and where it needed to land. Like if you're flying a plane, you know, I, I know that I'm going to sound really strange. Like you're not a pilot, but my boyfriend is and I learn a lot. So, you know, <laughs> you have to come up with a plan um, every time you go on a flight, right? So if you're taking, let's say your business is this plane, and you know the end destination, you have to break it down and figure out, okay, all these different things, all these different factors that factor into this flight, you know, or, you know, this, all these things that factor into this business. And so I couldn't figure out how to get this big picture into small steps. And so um, the flow chart, you know, even though flow charts seem really messy and a little disorganized, it helped me organize everything I needed to do as the administrator and to um, increase um, my productivity. And it did. It helped so much. So if there's a big project you're trying to work on, I highly suggest flow charts. And um, potentially I might do it on my real life realities uh, YouTube channel. If you guys don't know what that is, I'll also link that down below. Um, but it's just, you know, it's something to be able to really figure out, okay, what am I doing? Um, you know, what do I need to do? What is going to bring people in and how do I help people? And again, when I say bring people in, it's not, you know, it's not like I'm trying to get all these people into doing business and entrepreneurship. It's not the case at all. You know, I was actually talking to someone um, about this. He's a city manager for a certain city and, um, because I used to work in permit expediting, I was, you know, able to chat with him a little bit about what uh, city management looked like. But, you know, um, also that, you know, you know, their job is not just to make the city look nice and not just to make sure that we have, you know, housing and all that stuff. But we, you know, he was talking about bringing jobs in. And the sad reality is that some of these multi-level marketing companies are actually poaching people out of their jobs, which is then causing them to leave their jobs because they make all this money. And then as soon as they leave that job, them as entrepreneurs now, you know, with these market, uh, multi-level marketing companies are literally putting them under because, you know, one, taxes, <laughs> um, two, it's, it just doesn't support the cost of living because if you have a slow month, you don't get paid. If you have a slow year, you don't get paid. And so then they have to go out and find these jobs. And so, um, you know, the thing that I love about my business is that we're not actually selling, a, you know, we're not selling our own product. We partner with other businesses, small businesses, corporate businesses, everything. We really are like social media. We match people to product. We match people with people. And there's all these amazing things that is about my business, which is why, you know, I've been so, um, so focused on actually making sure that Anything I'm doing in the business world is not hindering the jobs, you know, the job flow and bringing in jobs and bringing in creatives, you know, and unfortunately, the economy, the economic system right now is just rigged against us, at least here in California. Um, you know, the taxes are so high and, you know, our taxes may be going to Social Security and they may not be. Who knows? Because, you know, the government has been known to lie and um, just plain and simple. And so do we actually know where our money is going? And, you know, I was again, I was talking to to my boyfriend's mother and we were talking about you know when people do their taxes at the end of the year they make all this money and they're like where did it all go where is it disappearing to and and these are people you know she was talking to me about you know big figure numbers and they're not sure where all their money's going and so that just shows you that you have to be able to you have to be present and so when you're you know 
again with this flow chart thing you know it caused me to buy a notebook that I could kind of be messy in and I could write out everything I was working on put it on a flow chart and help me put things into visual tasks and I did this for my finances my budget where's all my money going and another thing I, this is not sponsored but um, this is another app that I would highly suggest it used to be called deductor but it is now called hurdler and um, it is just amazing it um, tracks all your mileage auto tracks it it shows you how much um, money that you owe um, thus far based on the your monthly income and things like that in what you owe in in all the different brackets which is amazing and it tracks you know it tracks everything that is on your you know statements with your bank accounts and all those things and so it really is just incredible and I cannot recommend it more I'll leave a link down below and so um you know the next thing with this is, you know, when you when you reach a goal, because we are we are human, we're motivated by something in particular. And so, um, you know, having accountability and incentives really help you accomplish your goals. And so thankfully, I have people like my mom, my boyfriend, my best friend, my Google calendar <laughs> to keep me accountable to my small goals, to my tasks, my habits and, you know, my daily my daily things. And um, but I also incentivize myself by rewarding myself with either you know my spending money you know I have a budget and I stick to it pretty straight uh, strictly um which is you know and it's all dependent on my financial goals so if I make a certain amount of money that month um you know if I reach my goal in making that certain amount of money that month I'm like okay cool I have a bit of spending money let's go spend it you know um but or you know if I get all my tasks done for the week you know I can go have a date night with you know an extra date night with my boyfriend um you know as of now we kind of see each other about once or twice a week and so um you know on my day off I go spend it with him and sometimes you know the rest of the week I don't see him because I'm just so busy and he's busy because he's a pilot and so um you know maybe you know me getting my stuff done will incentivize me to actually have an extra date with my boyfriend which would be wonderful um or spend time with my friends or go to LA and hang out with my friends there and um or if I'm exceptionally tired and super introverted and antisocial just locking myself in my room and calling it early and <laughs> watching an episode of New Girl or Downton Abbey which I know are two very different shows um and so with that you know incentives are good you know motivation is good giving yourself something you know we have this thing me and my mom were talking about it you know are you stick motivated or are you carrot motivated and carrot is like the rewards or are you motivated by the stick which is you know the um the you know the fact that you know oh that doesn't feel good or oh like oh like I didn't do that and this is causing this to fail and oh oh god like I have to now balance it out a little bit and so you know with that it's it's funny because I am a stick motivated person and I'm trying not to be because I tend to learn the hard way and then I end up paying for it later which is so much worse but you know it's just it's one of these things where you can you can break it down and have incentives and you know even on your flow chart you know if I accomplish this goal this is my reward and sorry if my mic keeps going in and out I'm moving a lot <laughs> and so um but yeah, so, you know, and the other thing is um, dream boards. Now, I used to think dream boards were so cheesy. Like, I cannot tell you how much I used to despise dream boards. Um, but now, and I thought they were an exceptional waste of time, to be honest with you. And, um, but once I got into school to get my bachelor's for dance teaching and having been in a relationship and I'm just getting older in general, <laughs> um, you know, I know I'm very young, I'm turning 21, but I am getting older. And, you know, I see how dream boards are actually quite effective because, you know, especially when you have bigger things ahead like me and my boyfriend, for instance, we have, you know, you know, this dream board in our heads of sorts. And we talk about, you know, what kind of house do we want to live in? Like, where do we want to live? Where do we see ourselves, you know, residing? Like, and these are all just things that we're talking about right now in the moment, 10 years or even five years down the line, this could completely change. And so, you know, um, 
but for me, I realized, you know, okay, I'm going to start a dream board of everything that I'm doing now because going to England and getting into school with the University of Bath was not necessarily on my radar, but going to England was. And I always wanted to go. I always wanted to live there. I always wanted to um, have some sort of place there. And so for me, I... I've, that's a huge dream come true for me, not necessarily in the way that I thought it was going to be, but um, it was a huge dream come true for me. And so when I realized that that dream had had come into fruition, I was like, okay, I'm going to give dream boards a shot because maybe if I can be brave enough to do a simple task as apply for school to become a teacher, um, you know, a recognized dance teacher and a licensed and, you know, a a bachelor's degree um, in dance teaching, maybe I can do this for business and my homes and the things that I'm looking into and all these things. And so, um, so I started, I, I started a dream board and I actually don't have it on a massive board. I'm just not that person. I actually put it in a book and I have a beautiful Italian journal um, that is, you know, Italian leather and it's beautiful and you just look at it and it looks like a magical book. And so I started and I got a little Canon uh, mini printer. And and so I started to print out these small photos to dream up my future in a way. And, you know, from my, you know, from going to England to uh, what kind of house I want one day to what my bathrooms is. Like, if you know me, you know, bathrooms are a big thing for me like the the layout of my bathroom matters um to you know where do I want my dance career to go where do I want you know marriage like what kind of marriage do I want what kind of wedding do I want what kind of relationship with my friends do I want what kind of relationship with my family do I want you know what what does it all look like and so I started um putting it into a dream you know my dream journal is what I call it and it is just so incredible because what's been happening is you know it whenever I need that push or I need that encouragement or I need that hope when I feel hopeless about certain things because let me tell you business can beat you down if you let it and so when I'm allowing and I'm choosing to have a little pity party about myself I go to my dream journal and I remember okay these are my goals in life. These are the things that I want to do. And there, it's not just materials. I mean, I have so many things that I want to do as far as like creating programs to help the homeless and to bring um, solutions into cities and you know, to provide opportunities for ex-trafficked girls and boys and all these things, you know, it's, that's what's in my heart, you know, to start, you know, to start homes for, for people in foster care, to be able to adopt, like, all these things, and all these things require a substantial amount of money, like, to be helpful to society, it costs money, and so, all it boils down to is I need more money. So how am I going to do all these things? And that's where it becomes a, um, that's where it becomes this thing of, you know, how can I serve society better? So one of the things I wanted to share about, um, what a dream board actually did for me and a, you know, not really a dream board, but a flow chart in a sense and having small goals, um, to relate to my end goal. I wanted to share a little bit about that. And this is not really in the business sense. This is not in a corporate sense. Um, but this is in a real life scenario sense. So when I was uh, about 17, um, I started struggling with anorexia, um, and body dysmorphia. So not really anorexia yet, but I was struggling with body dysmorphia. I had some, um, pretty toxic, uh, ballet teachers in the past. And so, um, and not, you know, to keep a long, a very long story short in 2018, I started to find myself, um, it was actually on vacation. We were in Hawaii, me and my family. And, um, I started noticing that I was having a hard time eating, and that I was forgetting to eat. I was missing meals, sometimes going a day without eating and just living off of straight coffee and water and all these things. And, um, and so then it started, um, you know, it was okay for a while. It was manageable. 
And then um, I got to the point where I was, um, I was in, I want to say I was in my ballet company and because I was, um, oh no, I was preparing for uh, an exam. So I was preparing for the last exam that I took, which was my American Ballet Theater National Training uh, Curriculum exam for level six. And I, um, I found myself not eating. I found myself having a very hard time. Um, I was at about 120 pounds at the time and I was lacking in strength. And um, because of certain barrier points like language and things like that, because I do not believe that um, the particular teacher we had had any intention of harm or anything like that. But um, there was a bit of a language barrier. And um, uh, so basically the the thing was that to be a ballet dancer, you have to be slim in, you know, in certain areas. And so at that time, I wasn't. Um, I could, you know, show you guys pictures of what I look like at that point. And I looked on the thicker side. I mean, this is all relatively speaking. I am, I am back to about that weight currently at about 119, 120 fluctuating. And, um, you know, it was a, it was a thing that for me, I realized, um, well, this is not healthy. Um, so this is all in relative terms. So I, I can acknowledge I would never was fat or never was overweight. Um, but, um, some of the toxic teachers were telling me that I needed to lose more. And so, and literally telling me where there was no language barrier, you need to, um, be healthier and you're getting a little pudgy there and a little pudgy there and all that kind of stuff. So I dealt with anorexia, um, quite a bit. And then when I was in the company, it kind of eased up a bit because I was, I was eating a lot because I was dancing six hours a day and then, you know, six to eight hours a day. And then I was working, um, my business, which was at the time, my most popular service was housekeeping. And so I was doing that. And that is very, um, that is very physical. (laughs) Um, especially for the things that I did, I was working mostly on, um, houses that were move-ins and move-outs. And so it was, you know, an eight hour, six to eight hour job for, you know, a house up in the Hollywood Hills. And it's like cleaning these mansions and they're, and, you know, making every inch of that place, uh, spick and span and spotless. So, Um, so because of that, I was eating quite a bit. And then I actually, um, when I, you know, decided to, uh, dismiss, I was dismissed from the company. Um, I decided that, um, it was actually during Nutcracker and I, um, I was finding myself because I was dancing a lot less. And so I was basically at that point taking one technique class a week and then going to um, rehearsals. And so I was working quite a bit uh, in LA and stuff and I found myself eating less again. And then when Nutcracker season was over and I actually decided that I was going to take my break from dancing for um, until March and then COVID hit and then I ended up taking a much longer extensive break, but I um, developed anorexia and I was, you know, at that point I was not able to eat anything without feeling like I was going to throw up. I don't think I threw up very often, but, um, you know, I, I, I happened to not feel very well uh, at all when it came to food. I would get sick when I thought about food and all of that. And so, um, so when I, you know, my mom was very concerned, of course, and my family was very concerned. My friends, my boyfriend was incredibly concerned. And so when we, when it happened, we, um, I had to come up with a plan and I had to figure out, okay, do I want to stay like this or do I want to actually get back to a healthy space that is going to be beneficial for me, um, mentally, physically, and emotionally. (laughs) And so, um, so I, I got a coach, my, my, uh, mom is on keto. And so her coach, um, is a keto coach, but she also struggled with anorexia and body dysmorphia and all these things. And so, um, I decided, okay, that's, that's what I'm going to do. 
And so I actually have been meeting with her for over a year now. And um, it has, you know, we we would set small goals. So instead of going from eating, you know, one meal a day, it's like, okay, start adding snacks to your day. And, you know, just keep it simple and light. Just eat when you're, you know, eat when you're hungry. And, you know, I had to get my body used to turning on my hungry signals again. And so breaking it down from being anorexic to no longer being anorexic it was just so much for my brain to handle and I would get frustrated and incredibly emotional about it and so with the deprive of food you know I I wasn't able to um be at full capacity like I needed to be and so I ended up um with this coach we came up with small goals and now it's a year later and I am no longer anorexic and so um I probably was completely out of it uh around probably maybe I want to say fully January of this year. And so it's still pretty fresh and I still battle with, you know, moments here and there. But, you know, it's it's all based on, you know, again, the human brain and the human will is the default is here we are. It's negative. And, you know, and, you know, so when I'm in a negative space, I end up being in a negative mood, which then invites negativity. And so um, so, of course, I still have my moments, but This is a testimony of how smaller tasks actually get you to a bigger goal and to the bigger picture in a real life scenario. And, you know, it was incredibly hard, you know, and I had to fight a lot (laughs) to get to do the things that I knew needed to happen, but it was worth it. And I can say that now. And so you know, when you sit down and you think about anything, whether it's mental health, getting your mental health on track, getting your fitness goals on track, getting your health back on track, or your business, getting your business on track, getting your financial finances on track, come up with small goals to help you reach the big goals. And don't put so much pressure on yourself to have these massive goals achieved right away, you know, and that's part of creating your own economy, right? If you're going to create your own economy, you have little steps to, you know, just like in the American economy, you typically it's go to high school, get your, you know, graduate, get your college degree, apply for internships, apply for jobs, start your job, they start you off with training, all these things, and then you grow into your career. And so that is the same thing with entrepreneurship or anything in life. You have to come up with, okay, where's my starting point, which is always going to be education. Your starting point is education, and then you move on, you know, and you're going to be constantly learning throughout your whole journey. But okay, I'm beginning to educate. Now I need to start creating habits. Now I need to start setting small, small goals. And then now I'm moving into the big picture, and now I'm going forward, and now I'm on my way to a six-figure income. And so it is possible. And so I really hope this episode is beneficial to you in the sense that you feel like you can achieve your goals if you break it down into small tasks and your goals are the stepping stones to reach your dreams. And I encourage you, dream. Like this is, you know, I am a testament of my dreams coming true. I am a testament of when I set goals, you know, when I was younger, I was very good at setting goals and reaching them. And, you know, after, you know, life is going to hit you and you're just going to have to get back up. And, you know, that's something I would say to myself, my younger self is, you know, okay, when you don't reach a goal, stop beating yourself up. Don't have a pity party. Just keep on going and do it again. Get up and try, get back on the horse and do it again. And so, um, so if you guys are interested in setting goals and you kind of want somebody to chat through, go ahead and, uh, email me at life uh, info dot life on point at gmail.com I'll leave it in the description down below um but I want to know your thoughts so connect with me on Instagram at the Ellie way or uh, join my free Facebook group again that's 818 the power to create wealth you can go to facebook.com slash group slash 818 biz b-i-z um and all of this information will be linked in the show notes as always and don't forget to rate and review this uh episode and don't forget to uh, subscribe to my show on whatever platform you're listening to right now and i just want to say thank you guys so much for listening for supporting my podcast for supporting me you guys mean the world to me and uh remember 
you've been given the power to create wealth, so go get them. (laughs) Cheers.